Okay, uh, this is a video about the 7mm eyepieces that you can choose and use. 7mm is a high power uh, and low focal length eyepiece. Uh, you cannot use it at all conditions. At most, we really, really limit what you what you can see with it. But it's not as bad as some of the 2.335 millimeter eyepieces, or is not as uh, wide angle as 12 or 10 millimeter ones. Something in the between which you can use on targets like the Moon, the planets like Jupiter and Saturn. So it's a good range of eyepieces uh, if you have a, 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 you know, holes in your eyepieces uh, that you want to cover in the range of the eyepieces that you have in your eyepiece set. So uh, I have here a set of eyepieces like that and I will go through it with you. Uh, of course, uh, First, we have to remember that there are eyepieces which are not very far from that uh, range that I mentioned. One of them is, for example, 8mm eyepieces. There is not much 8mm eyepieces. This is a Star Guider ED 8mm one. Quite large lens. It's comfortable to use. And, uh, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, the price of it, you can buy it secondhand anything between 30 to 35 pound new one is 43 so not very expensive considering that the quality is quite solid and uh, there are plus all eyepieces like this one that i have here seven and a half millimeter one which is a uh, have a very tight uh, eye relief you, you have to practically get very close and personal with the eyepiece to see anything but if you can live with it and if you don't have enough budget uh, this can be a good choice. It's a puzzle at the end of the day. It has a good flat field of view. It's relatively cheap. You can buy it as little as 10 pounds, sometimes even less in the uh, places like auction sites, eBay and other places, or uh, a little bit more new. It's better than the Ramstein and the Huygens ones. In the other range of the 7 millimeters, 7 millimeters I have a few here, you can get again, for example, something like a mid uh, 6.3 millimeter eyepiece, which is here. Again, is a puzzle, very tight angle of view, but again, if you can live with it, it gives you a, 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 a give you good results. It has a, I should correct myself, tight eye relief. So you have to really take your eye close to it. If you're wearing glasses, you should remove your glasses to look in with this eyepiece to see anything. Uh, more comfortable one is this 6mm eyepiece, TMB Planetary, TMB Optical Planetary 2 6mm. Uh, SW stands for uh, super wide angle 6mm. Quite, it is one of the cheapest you can get. Twenty-three pound in Britain, in America probably thirty pound in Canada around thirty-five to forty pound. Australia the same, and rest of the world you can calculate it based on the uh, exchange rate. Uh, this is one of the best eyepieces you can buy. Uh, big lens, good eye relief, uh, nice packaging, uh, good feel. The eye cup can be turned, you receive it, you think that it's loose. It's not loose, you have to, you know, you can loosen up, uh, bring up the eye cup. So, it has a good eye relief, or you can tighten it up, and the eye relief, eye cup will be smaller, the distance between your eye and the lens. And it has a big lens, good quality, 23 pounds, really good, second hand, even probably cheaper, you can get it. And then we have we come to puzzles, mid uh, and celestial puzzles. They are again with the um, very uh, tight eye relief. You have to get your eye very close to the lens to see it, but usable. You can use it if you are short of budget. Go for these ones; they are good. And this is a rare eyepiece. This one, Bertelle B six millimeter B stands for Bertelle. It's a patented eyepiece by the U.S. Army. The modified versions of it uh, are made by uh, Russians and by Japanese. This one is Japanese, Asai Pentax. It's from Asai Pentax 60mm six, telescope. It has a field of view which is 60mm. 
Field of view of the puzzles is 42 millimeter to 45, sometimes 50. The field of view of this one is 62 degrees. And uh, field of view means the tightness of the hole that you look through it when you completely, your eyes close. So the bigger is this, you can see a bigger portion of the sky. The tighter it is, you see a tighter portion of the sky. So that's that's a puzzle. A bigger uh, um, angle of view, something like that. You see less of the body of the eyepiece and see more of the sky. And this has a 60 to 70 millimeter, comparable to a Teleview Nagler almost. And this is a good eyepiece, I'm telling you, this is a good eyepiece. I have another one of these 17 and a half millimeter. One of the brightest images I've ever seen I got with that one. But these are eyepieces if you don't have any 7mm one. 7 millimeter is something in between this range. Um, I can in introduce you to something like the 7.2mm uh, Antares Spears Valor eyepiece Super Wide Angle Series 2. Uh, good eyepiece, quite heavy for the 7mm ones. Long, quite heavy, tall, and uh, good eye relief, and uh, build quality is good. The only thing is that it may be a little bit more expensive, or you cannot find it. It's made in Canada, and it's difficult to find it these days. The, uh, you may come across it sometimes, but not really all the time. Uh, it's good. It's not very good, but it's good. It's acceptable. It gives good views. This is a 7mm uh, TMB Optical Planetary 2 7mm eyepiece. It has a big eye lens, uh, good uh, smite or kind of you know barlow at the bottom. Really good quality, solid. Again, the eye cup can be uh, brought up. So for such a such a cheap eyepiece. Really very good build quality. And if you are short of cash, in this range, 7 millimeter, you cannot find anything better than this. For less than 23 pounds, you can have this eyepiece. Eye relief, very good. So you don't need to really go very close to this. You can see the whole picture. The field of view is 62 millimeter, 62 degrees. This one is uh, 82 degrees, very comfortable. Uh, this one is a bit tighter, but we come to the better eyepieces here, but in a different price range. This is a Teleview Nagler 7mm. This is the original or tape one. And now we have a, the eye relief uh, was of this was around 11 to 13mm, I think. Very tight, but not, not as not tight as this one uh, or this one. But relative to this one, the eye relief was tight. But I'm telling you, if, if you find it, about this one, 80 pound, uh, I was lucky. Usually it sells around 150, 120, anything around that price. The Teleview Nagler uh, um, Tape 6, 7 millimeter, uh, is around that price. This one, 120, 130, 150, depending on the greed of the person or how much you need this actually. Uh, I must say this has given me the best views of some of the craters on the moon. The craters that were visible with this one, they were not visible with this one. You could see hint of it. And with this one, no, you could not see also. So this is a really good eyepiece <coughs> in, that, in that range. So all in all, if I want to recommend eyepieces, if you are rich and you <coughs> you are not short of cash, this Teleview 7mm is for you, Nagler, any one is the original or uh, later ones. If you are short of cash, <coughs> this one is good. If you are lucky to find something like this, 82 degrees, that is also 82 degrees, I must say, but very tight eye, eye relief, or field of view is 82, this is 82. Um, it's rare, you may not find it really, so don't bother to look for it, probably you, you need only luck to find one like that. <coughs> all, all the time you remember you can have puzzles if you're <coughs> short of money, 
Uh, always remember you can use the uh, TMB planetaries. They're very good. A little bit higher in price is the <coughs> Starguide ED8 millimeter. And all these puzzles, if you're really short of money, they will work for you. They will serve you. You can use them. You can observe with them. They're not bad. They're good. They're basic, but they're good. You don't need a lot to spend. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, you just want to see that a uh, few things occasionally. There is no reason to spend a lot of money like this one, 150 pounds. You can spend a reasonable amount, a low, low amount of money just to have this and enjoy it a few times. The occasion that you can use this really high power eyepieces is limited. You practically, you may not be able occasionally use, see any anything good, any good targets with them. So. Um, these will serve you also, don't worry about it. But tell it, if you find it, get it. If you cannot find it, that's it, forget it. You don't find this. These are not very popular. It's patented by US Army. Anybody else makes some modifications on them, including Teleview. US Army, in this sense, have been very stingy with this. They don't let the people use this design. They use it for their own optical instruments, or probably they're not using it even nowadays. <coughs> so. This is a category of the 7mm eyepieces that I have, and uh, I think number one is this. For money and budget, this. If you're lucky, you get this one. This is cheaper than that, almost half price as that, although about is £70, that one £80. But I was lucky in that sense. 8mm uh, also will serve you well, uh, ED. And plus, is always available, cheap, better than Ramster, Huygens, Huygenian. When I was a kid, I only had Huygenians. These were really a dream to have such a thing. These are good. By today's standard, they are very cheap. On this one, you may not find it. Okay, I changed the resolution to 4K. Hopefully, you will not see much pixelation. You will see anyway, but uh, not as bad as it was. What you see is now passing the center of the picture, hopefully, is what is called as Aristarchus Plateau. And the light is not very good, and also the clouds are closing a little bit. And you can see the color of it is it's different. So one of the olivine rich area, olivine is a metal that, uh, the mineral that exists in the mantle area of the planets crust mantle core if you remember these are the layers of the planets planetary bodies uh, which are made of rock or any other surface has this kind of layering any object differentiated object So it's now passing the center, top top of the center, above the center. And the brightest spot is the Aristarchus crater itself. And to the lower part of the image you can see the Reiner Gamma. Oh, suddenly it became so clear. Bring it to the center. Yeah, it's now right dead center. I'm doing all this with my mobile camera, but uh, I use a bracket. It's one of these ones that I bought. Digicam attachment adapter. I bought it from China. Really, I'm happy with the result.
you are looking through the eyepiece directly. I just enjoy the view. Um, yeah, good as a map. All these lunar features are created by impact. Circular features are called crater. But the craters to me are superficial because what you see is the geological feature like mantles, faults, even faults. I've seen some faults, can you believe it, and some uh, trust faults and faults. You have to look for them. And as my skill in digiscoping increases, I will try to show you more of these features. Our star course again is at 2 o'clock, and uh, at 2 o'clock or half past 3, you can see the tiny dot of the Rhino Gamma, that mag uh, magnetic anomaly. The superficial feature, they say that is because the soil of the moon, the lunar soil in that part, due to the magnetic field, could not be weathered, uh, blackened, darkened by the um, solar wind. And that's the reason the, they have remained bright. They deflect the charged particles. You know that charged particles deflect in the magnetic field. So if there is a magnetic field there, all will be, it is working. So of the interesting anomalies, you can imagine if you're a science writer, science fiction writer, you can write about that. <laughs> it's a city or something to trying to protect itself from the damaging and carcinogenous effects of the sun and uh, yeah, magnetic storms from the sun. Yeah, that's actually a very good story, you know. <laughs> if you are writing, write it. You can write, just give credit to me. Hard for try it. Beautiful, magnificent uh, Caucasus Mountains. Um, the moon is a spherical. Clearly, you can see when I focus on the edge of the picture, the side of it is also. <laughs>